All right, so today is the day we're going to take this brand new starter that we've been working on over the last seven days and we're going to make our first two loaves of bread with it. And look at how it looks this morning before I mix dough, because I already mixed dough. Look at the activity in this guy. He is looking happy and healthy and ready to make some dough. All right, so we have this amazing starter. It's full of life. It's you know more than doubled in the jar. And we're gonna mix our first batch of dough. We're gonna do a double batch. And let's talk about the recipe real quick. So our recipe is gonna be 800 grams of flour. And when we refer to a recipe, we always refer to the flour weight. It's the thing that makes the most logical sense. Um, everything else will be a percentage of the flour. Don't worry, the recipe's in the description. So our flour is 100%, 800 grams. Our water is going to be 75% of our flour weight. So 75% of 800 is 600. Our starter is going to be 20% of our flour weight. So 20% of 800 is 160. And our salt is gonna be 2% of our 800 gram flour weight, which is 16 grams. Um, the water can vary in terms of percentage and it's referred to as your hydration level. I find 75% to be like a really nice, uh, easy, kind of hydration level for me to deal with given my environment. I'm in the Rocky Mountains, kind of a drier environment. Uh, if you find this dough to be too wet when you get to shaping uh, or even like through the stretch and folding process, perhaps taking off 5% is going to be what you know makes it a little bit easier to handle. So you could go 70% and all you would do is instead of going, you know, what is what is that, instead of 600 grams, it's 560 grams of, of flour, or sorry, of water, so to make your hydration level 70%. And if you wanted to back down to, let's say 60%, that would be a really dry dough. Uh, but what's 60% of 800, 480? So your hydration level is a, you know, all these things are a percentage, which makes it scalable. If you wanted to make a bigger batch of dough, you wanna go 1,000 grams of flour. A 75% hydration would be 750. Percentages, this is amazing. Look at math being super useful in an everyday situation. Uh, in general, the salt, the 2% is pretty static. It's not really gonna change uh, unless we get to you know, some enriched doughs, maybe like a, uh, like a brioche or something like that. And the starter can vary. It's usually 15 to 20%. 20% is easy math. Uh, if you wanted to slow your dough down, you could go down to 15%. Uh, but generally, all my basic like sourdough recipes, I just go 20%, and it works really well, and the math is easy. So we're going to mix some dough right now, and we're starting with uh, water. Actually, salt. We're going to measure our salt. And the salt, we're going to measure it into its own container, and we're going to set it off to the side. And I'm going to just best practices our salt's gonna go in at our first stretch and fold. And I know the salt can go into the water. I know the salt can also go in when we incorporate the flour. There's this, salt is as polarizing in, in sourdough bread baking as politics and religion are in just society in the world. Um, as long as you're you know, putting your salt in at the first stretch and fold, you're gonna be on the right track for other variations, using whole grain flours, dark rye flour, just different stuff. Uh, I know there's other ways to do it, and I believe the salt can go in in a lot of different places without it absolutely ruining your bread or preventing the flour from absorbing water. So I'm not going to go in any deeper than that. We're just going to go salt at the first stretch and fold, and there are other ways to do that. So we're measuring out our salt and we're setting it off to the side, our 16 grams. And I'm using pink Himalayan salt. You can use kosher salt, uh, you know, to avoid uh, what is it? The iodized salt. Do not use that. It will, it will not produce the results you want. And then also any salt that has like an anti-caking agent, I'd kind of steer away from that. Uh, the Morton's kosher salt, they make a pickling kosher salt that is finer, which dissolves easier into the dough, and I really like it. Uh, I would recommend that. Pink Himalayan. You can experiment with your salts, but like start with something basic that is not iodized. Anyway, bowl on the scale. And look at this bowl. I am weighing it for a reason. I want to know the weight of the bowl. Make a note of it. Know what your bowl weighs. This is a five and a half quart bowl that weighs 600 grams. Later when we divide our dough, we're going to want to know the bowl weight. It's going to make math 
Math again, more math. There's more math later, I promise. Uh, simple math. But we've got our bowl zeroed out. Here comes the water. We're going 600 grams of water at 75% of 800, right? So our water's in, and then we're gonna drop in our starter. We're just gonna scoop it out of the jar. We need 160 grams. And people will talk about the float test being an indicator of the activity level of your starter. But if your starter took 10 hours to triple in volume, chances are it's gonna be in really good shape. The float test, you can have a sinker that's active. You can have a floater that's inactive. It's not a reliable test. It can serve as a guideline. Um, going water first and then starter, I'm, I'm not turning back if the starter sinks. I know it's good. It never does sink. Um, but you can see even this big chunk, these two big chunks I put in, they float. Uh, and then the little guy that's not floating that I just put in, it's not floating because I smashed all the air out of it, getting everything out of the jar. So even though the giant ones are floating, the little one's not. But that's no big deal. I already know our starter is good. It doubled and tripled in volume. It's full of air. It smells amazing. It's good to go. And then we're going to stir the starter into solution, just like we do in the jar when we're, you know, feeding our starter. We want to distribute all this starter into, into the water. And we're just going to mix it with, a, I'm just using a dinner spoon. You don't need a whisk or a fork, but whatever works for you. If you were mixing this with a dough whisk, of course you'd use the dough whisk. Um, there's a link to using the dough whisk in the video. Interesting tool. I have thoughts on that. And I'm going to let this, I'm playing this out in real time. Like what is it, 47 seconds or something to incorporate the starter into the water? And then flour. We're going flour in. This is bread flour. It's what we have. It's what we've been feeding our, our starter all week. And 800 grams. And now we're going to mix it. We're going to mix it by hand. And when you go to mix it, we want to use your hand like a paddle. We want to keep all of the dough, all the, all the flour, all the water off of the palm of your hand. It's going to stay fingers or, you know, base your fingers to your fingertips. And it's going to make it easier to handle and it's going to make it so it doesn't turn into a gluey mess in the palm of your hand. Uh, we want to, you know, keep your fingers together. And it's kind of a tapping motion, right? So you see, kind of tap, tap, bring some of the stuff at the 12 o'clock side to the middle, rotate the bowl, tap, tap, bring it together. Um, I'm playing this out in full real time here. And I don't think it took more than two minutes, but you know, you can look at the timestamps as they go. And I'm just working my way around. No rush. It's going to all come together. It's going to feel like it's too wet and then it's going to feel like it's too dry. And then it's going to get sticky and be like a sticky mass, real similar to the sticky mass that you were creating in the jar when you fed your starter. Like every time you fed your starter, you'd put your starter into solution. You'd then you'd add the flour and then boom, there's this thick sticky mass in your jar. This is going to kind of feel like that. And, you know, index finger kind of scraping the, the side of the bowl, collecting up some of this stuff. And as it starts to come together, we're going to, you know, it'll get to a point where you, you can't really tap it anymore you, and you're going to grab it and you're going to pinch into it. And we're trying to create like kind of a, a cohesive um, uh, feel to it. And like as you grip it and pinch it, kind of pick it up, sort of roll it down uh, the, side, the front side, your 12 o'clock side of the bowl. You know, rotate the bowl, grab it, kind of roll it down. And you can't do this wrong. We're really just bringing flour and water together and the starter, which is flour and water. And once we've got this all incorporated, little bowl scraper, we're going to go around, scrape down the bowl. Um, oh, yeah, the right, my, my fingers, right? We want... The hands are pretty clean. All the dough is off of the palm of my hand. I'm going to get my left hand wet and I'm going to use that wet hand to slide the dough kind of off of my fingers, like the leftover sticky bits. Um, those are, I don't want to wash it down the drain and I'm not going to wipe it off with a paper towel. That's good dough. So put it back in with, with the big piece of dough. And um, then you can see like my hand's really not sticky. It's not covered in dough. So people that complain about their hand being covered in dough and this being a sticky project that's really difficult, it's because they're using too much of their hand. And in an even smaller batch, if you were making an individual, doing this in individuals, um, it would be even less dough to handle and your hand would stay even cleaner. But my hand is pretty clean in the video. And then bowl scraper and then we go around the bowl and clean it up. And the bowl is pretty clean even before I go bowl scraper, but I, you know, working in the restaurant business all my life, I'm kind of, that's just one of those things. Like I, my bowl needs to be clean. I want it to look nice. Um, it's just a good practice. Keep things clean. Your workspace and the bowl that you're working in. 
So it's scraped down, uh, we're good to go. We've got kind of this sticky, shaggy, massive dough and we're gonna cover it with a silicone lid. I love these things, link in the description, they're the best. And in 30 to 45 minutes, I usually go 45 minutes on this first one, uh, just to really let the, all the gluten proteins relax and start developing. Uh, we're gonna let it rest, and then we're gonna get our salt in in our first stretch and fold. So that's when you will see me next. We're gonna stretch and fold this and incorporate the salt in about 45 minutes.